you guys remember this image? We're cutting her out. We wanted to do a darker exposure for the sky, a lighter exposure from her. And we said, well, what if we were to process her out? We could look through the color channels. Do you guys remember the process for channel masking? What were we looking for in these color channels here? The best contrast between the foreground and the background. Blue channel was pretty high contrast. You're looking for something that's fairly close to a silhouetted version of the person. And if you look at the histogram, oh, we had the two little mountain ranges over here. Although, do we do this directly to the blue channel? No, that would mess up the color in the image, wouldn't it? But if we were to duplicate this layer, we could call up our levels, we can make the foreground nice and dark, we can make the background nice and light, and that's something that we could load up as a selection. If we went under Select, Load Selection, we called up our blue copy there. We could then give her a layer mask, which of course would be completely the wrong way around, but Command-I, and there she is cut out. All right. Cool, I wonder if we could do these for the green screen and the image that's shot on white. First off, what's the deal with green screen anyway? It's more of a video technique, isn't it? For like dropping out backgrounds when you have video. Originally it was blue screen. Chroma key blue was the color you'd use. And the software, though the, originally it was hardware in the video stuff, would just drop out the blue component and it would become transparent. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Groundhog Day, but the weather lady was wearing a blue dress. Or, or no, it was just uh, someone who'd visited the studio and she was just a head floating because you know the blue was dropped out. So it's meant more for video stuff. If you're doing stills, you can photograph someone on a green green screen, but there may be a bit of a downside. Let's take a look at that. Pop into the folder green screen, open up the image, Patrick Fordham Photo 0176.cr2, and just hit open image, just process it through here. And run through the same process for making a channel mask. So call up the image, dig through the channels, you'll find that that green channel has the best contrast, and just drag it down onto the new channel icon, that'll make a duplicate of it. And then we'll call up the levels. Command L, grab the black point, and around the outside here, we're just looking for enough shadow information that we can avoid exposing this, the, the detail in here. If this was a layer mask, remember on a layer mask, black hides, white reveals, so this dark stuff would be hiding it a bit, but it would also be partly transparent. If we pull this black point up, you can see those shadows getting darker and darker. This black would nicely hide all that information although there's still a lot of gray in the highlights. What if you grab this point? Now here's an interesting question. When we did it with the girl standing on the fence, there were two distinct histograms. There's kind of like a little mountain range down at zero, you know, where the shadows were, and then there's another mountain range up in the highlights. And we just kind of pulled those points down to where it just clipped off that highlight information. Well, here's the highlight spike up here. If I pull this down till it just clips off the highlight information, this is still gray. Why do you think that is? What, what was this highlight? What part of the image was represented by this little spike over here? Probably this card that she was holding. There, there's some gray tones in it, and there it's been blown out. So we need to go a little bit further. Now we can start to see this gray stuff starting to disappear. Now we don't want to take it too far. A lot of people think, well, if we're trying to get rid of all this gray stuff, what if we just pulled the black and white points right together until, oh, you start to see why. That's not an entirely convincing edge, is it? You want to keep these points as far apart as you can. So I just pull this in enough that I start to get some black shadows in here. So I'm at around 50 or so. For the highlights, I just want to pull it down far enough that that background goes white. Now there might be a bit of a downside, but that's okay, we can deal with that later. Take a look at what happens on the top right of the image there. Oh, we still got some gray information. Not a big deal. What kind of channel is that called? It's not red, it's not green, it's not blue. It's not a color channel, it's an alpha channel. We're also gonna use it to create a layer mask. Whether we fix it as an alpha channel or once it's a layer mask, doesn't matter. This we can deal with later. So just pull the white point down enough that that wash of white starts to appear around the outside there. The gray, don't worry about it too much. We'll deal with that later. So I'm at what, 50 and 139, 140, thereabouts, and I'll hit OK. Now there is gonna be some cleaning up by hand. Like if we were to use this as a layer mask right now, well, we'd have to invert it, but she would end up partly invisible on her face. You'd see the hair, she'd turn up invisible. So all this stuff in the middle here has to become black. Now, if I grab a paintbrush and I start painting with black, oops, 100% opacity, I can fill this in. What do you think might be more appropriate, a hard edge brush or a soft edge brush for filling this in? Kind of depends. Like if you look out towards the edge here, let me just follow along on the screen. I'm going to really quickly make a layer mask out of this. And let's see what would happen if we did the layer mask as is. I'll pop back to my RGB here, load up that alpha channel as a selection, green copy, perfect, and give it a layer mask. 
She's been hidden. I'll invert that. There we go. She's been brought back, although all the areas where that alpha channel was showing white, since I've inverted it, it's now showing black. So she's hidden here. Some of the hair around here is also hidden. It's not that this was the background showing through. It's that it was kind of a highlight in the hair, but it's coming out transparent. You can see that checkerboard pattern back there. So ultimately, all of this needs to be filled with white, needs to be revealed. And like I said, you can do it while it's an alpha channel just by painting black or you can do it once it's a layer mask by painting white. Now, watch out for this. I see a lot of people, they say, okay, well, I need to get all this stuff here visible. So they start coming up to the edge and they wash right out into the background. Remember, this is revealing not just the hair and her skin, but it's also revealing the green of that background. This means we've gone too far. So whether it's a hard or a soft brush depends on how precise you want to get. If you want to do it while you're zoomed out to here, I'd probably use a hard brush, fairly large, and just kind of assume, all right, anything from here inwards is hair, anything from here outwards is background, and just kind of grind right up along the edge there. If you want to get a little more careful with it, you can zoom in. And in that case, I'd probably go with a soft brush. And whether you're looking at the layer mask or the image itself, just be careful when you get close up to that edge there. Just make sure you don't bring back any of that green background. So I'll run through that process again right from the beginning. Let me just revert this. So if I wanted to cut her out onto a transparent background, look through the channels. Green channel looks like it has the best contrast. Blue, not very convincing. Red, not a lot of contrast. Green, that's pretty good contrast. It's about as good as we're going to get here. Duplicated the green layer, called up the levels, pulled up that black point until I just start getting some black information around here, and pulled down the white point until you just see that wave of white kind of wash out from behind her, just enough that it goes around here. Now, another neat little trick. This area here was really like, you know, it was kind of hard to decide if it was background or foreground. There's a lot of gray information in here. What if we pulled this black point a little bit further? We could get a much better edge across there, although by pulling this further, this side not nearly as convincing. Do we have to do this entire thing all at once? Could we do little bits of this? Could we do levels adjustments on little bits? If we had a selection, we could, couldn't we? So what if I pulled up this black point so it looks good around here? This area is going to need a little bit more, but that's OK. I'm just going to hit OK. And what if I had a selection? What if I grabbed my lasso tool and selected just this area that needed a little bit more kick in the shadows? called up my levels, pulled up that shadow a bit more. This area got a little bit more, although if I did have to go further, that hard edge on this selection is causing a really noticeable difference between here and here. How could I avoid this hard transition between the selected and the not selected areas? I could feather that selection. So what if before I made my selection, I took this feather radius, let's say I cranked it up like you know, 30, 40, 50, whatever. I can play around with that trial and error grabbed this bit of edge, command L, called up those levels. I could fill in the shadows in these areas around here, give this a little bit more of a punch while leaving the rest of the area alone. And that feathered edge means that you don't see that hard cut between the two. So it's kind of blending between these areas. When I hit OK, there's that nice contrasting edge along the outside. Command D, whenever you're done with a selection, get rid of those marching ants, command D. And then I can take my paintbrush Oops, and I can fill all this stuff in. Again, whether I do it while it's an alpha channel or once it's a layer mask doesn't make that big of a deal. All this is going to have to be filled in with white. All this needs to be filled in with black. Maybe I'll use a hard edge brush. So give that a try. See if you can get that layer mask looking good. And then we'll go through the process of using that to put her onto a gray background. Okay, so once you've got the silhouette, it's time to turn that into a layer mask. So I'm just going to pop back into my channels. Now, guys, be careful of the layers that you have visible, okay? I see a lot of people, when they're ready to go back to RGB, they're clicking on the eyeballs. Look at what happens if I click on the eyeball. Boink! Oh, here's what happened. I made the RGB composite channel visible, but it's not active. It's not selected. The green copy is still selected. All I did was turn on the eyeball. And also, the eyeball is visible on my active green copy alpha channel, uh, which is why we see that red around there. It's kind of a, a simulation of like a ruby lift, which was something we used in the darkroom to mask areas off. So instead of clicking on the eyeball, click on the letters R, G, and B. And notice how 
these layers become active, their eyeball turns on, the green copy is no longer active, and its eyeball is turned off. So just click on the letters R, G, and B. I'll pop back into my Layers panel, and I'm just going to load this up as a selection. Select, load selection, and in this case it already knew that it was the green copy I wanted because that was the only alpha channel in there. Hit OK, and give it a layer mask. And we're not quite done, are we? What was the next step after this? Invert, Command I, there she be. So you'll have her on a transparent background, but are we done? What if the client wanted that on a gray background? Let's give that a try. Let's make a 50% a gray background for this thing to sit on. There's a bunch of ways we could do it. We could do a solid color fill. I'm just gonna make a new transparent layer. The bottom of the layers panel, I'm gonna hit that plus sign. There's my new transparent layer. I will fill this transparent layer, edit, fill, and for contents, I will choose 50% gray and I'll hit OK. And I'll just drag that to the bottom of the stack. Remember, it's like we're looking down through our layer stack here. I see my gray layer. That's all I see. She's hidden below it. If I drag the layer to the bottom of the stack, there she is on gray. And do we see any problems occurring? Well, yeah, depending on whether you filled her hands in or not, her hands might be invisible. I filled mine in. But look around. Uh-oh, what's going on around here? She's got green, which makes sense if you think about it. Take a look on the screen for a second. Here's the original image. And if I zoom in here, the camera's not perfectly sharp. You know, the lens is a bit soft. There's always going to be, uh, and some of that green kind of came in around the hair here. So however carefully I mask off that hair, it still picks up that actual green color because it actually was green on the hair. Well, that's kind of problematic. What could we do about that? Um, what do you think we could do about that, that green fringe over there. Do you think that maybe there's an image where we had a castle and we added a sky to it using a blending mode and then we discovered there was a blue fringe around the tree and the side of the castle. Chromatic aberration. What did we do about that blue fringe? Anybody remember? Uh, blending a blending mode. Which blending mode? Okay. Color. We had a color problem around that building. So what if I made a new transparent layer and I changed its blending mode from normal to color. And then I took a paintbrush, maybe a soft edge brush just for convincibility -osity. And then I option clicked on the hair. When you hold down the option key, you get that little bullseye, and I sampled the hair color. By option clicking, her hair color becomes my foreground color. And if I were to paint that over top of her hair, it would force the hair to become that foreground color. Wait a minute, it's hitting the background as well. It's hitting her, fixing the, but it's also hit, hitting the background. How could I stop it from hitting the background? How could I make this layer here affect only that layer zero? Any thoughts? I could clip it to the layer below. You guys remember clipping masks? Now let's say I right click on the name layer two here. If I scroll down, we've got a bunch of options. One of them is create clipping mask. And when I select it, boink. This layer jumped to the right a few pixels. There's an arrow pointing directly at this image, so it can only affect her. It can only affect the hair. It doesn't affect the layer down below. Here's without the clipping, and here's with. Uh, and now, here's without the blending mode. I put it in color blending mode, but take a look. Remember, a blending mode is basically just a set of rules that defines how this layer is going to interact with the layers below. And without the blending mode, I'm just taking this color, and I'm just painting it over top. Sample the hair, boink, paint it over top. It's the blending mode, color, and the fact that it's clipped to the layer below that makes it affect only the hair. So I sample the color I need and I paint it over top. And resample as you go. Just because you got the right color over here doesn't mean it'll be the right color over here. Look at how much darker this hair is, which means its saturation is probably also quite a bit lower. So resample as you go. Okay, so guys, that worked pretty good for the green fringe, didn't it? There's another picture of her in there on a white background.